working on getting the garage a little rearranged, make a little more room. Freed up this whole wall here, like I said. Got the wood stove hooked up in the corner. Fridge off to the side, doesn't take up too much room. Now when you pull something in, you got a little bit of room to work here. Made a little wonky shelf for the stereo. Not sure whether that's going to stay there or not because uh, I got that oil furnace that I'm going to bring in set up. I waited a little too long. So got some snowy weather. Everything's frozen in out there, but uh, I'm hoping that it sits on a base because the heat comes from under it. Hoping I can fit it and tuck it under those stairs to keep it out of the way, but I'm not sure whether it's going to be too tall or not. Not really uh, any other good places to uh, put it other than, you know, just right over here somewhere. I even thought about there keep my welder right there you don't really need you know to get up the stairs you just step you don't need that little landing but I don't know if that'd be stupid to stick the furnace there or not probably someone had the idea a couple of people said that um, I should put it upstairs and then have uh, just like a duct coming down you know and just have it blowing the heat like right out the floor which that would be nice. It would be really nice, perfect. But the only thing is, I'd have to put the fuel tank up there, which means I'd have to lug fuel up the stairs to fill it. My oil guy could, wouldn't fill it up there. And uh, I couldn't put the oil tank outside because that pump is not gonna pull, it's not gonna pull the fuel up the line up that high just isn't this just doesn't work that way so um, I don't think that's gonna be the answer I do like having the wood stove in here as an added you know just so you can get a little fire going and burn some shit I mean it's kinda nice but ultimately I mean the furnace would go good in that corner where that is but um, I only really got other than putting a hole in the wall which I'm gonna have to do for the furnace vent I just made that it just goes out the window and got another window over there but you don't wanna you don't wanna be sitting up here hanging out because uh, this door just uh, is not tight at all I mean it's not insulated very well and uh, doesn't shut tight and you can see a good size opening around it that door is wonky too that's got to be adjusted but it's good enough good enough for me for now Whew. Look at this little shiny baby, huh? Christmas Eve. Maybe you need a last minute gift idea. Roll this little red baby right out. Put a big bow on it.
Christmas Eve. Hope everyone's having a good one. I know I am. Cheers again. So, it's time we talk about the Ford Ranger. Hearing so much about this Ford Ranger. God damn it, this Ford Ranger. That's all I hear about. Oh yeah. It's 100% true what you've heard. This was 100% free. Yeah, free. And uh, I'm gonna tell you how that came about. Uh, it's gonna be as accurate as I know, as far as the information goes. You know, um, Maybe I don't have it pinpointed to exactly the right story, but what I was given and what I got as far as uh, information goes, this is the story. Uh, I drove uh, altogether almost 800 miles to uh, get this thing. And the reason for that is well, the old guy, which was uh, an uncle, as far as I know, um, of a person that I used to know, that um, used to be friends with, and I uh, haven't seen him in a long time, but um, it's been many years, and uh, this guy... Bought this Ford Ranger in 2005, um, brand new. This was his truck, this was his trusty little truck, you know. He uh, he drove it around and that was his, uh, his nice little truck. And roughly um, about six years ago, he decided that uh, it was time to get a new truck. You know, it was about that time. He had uh, about 80,000 miles on it. And it was just, uh, you know, that time, some people, you know, they just, uh, they want to go get a new, newer vehicle. It's getting old, you know, as far as they're concerned. And it's just, uh, just what they want to do. So he said to his, uh, his family, his nephews and whatnot, um, You know, instead of trading in my Ranger at the dealership, which uh, a lot of people do and they don't realize that you get ripped off when you do that, but um, it's easier for them, so you can't really tell them any different. But he, uh, he said, you know, um, maybe somebody needs this. Maybe somebody can jump in and use this, you know, for their transportation. Um, so I'd like someone to have it, you know, and, and uh, well, how, you know, how much you want for it? Well, $500. And, you know, people start flapping their gums and they, um, you know, start saying shit that <clears throat> it gets people's minds, you know, kind of boggled up. And uh, they said, you know, there was stuff said like, you're crazy, you're gonna sell that $500, truck's worth $4,000, $5,000, you know? So, um, then, as far as I know, a little, kind of a little family squabble got going because, you know, one nephew got offered it, one wanted to buy it, he wanted to pay some pretty good money for it, you know? He didn't want, he didn't want something for nothing, he wanted to pay, and he had the money, he wanted to buy this nice little truck. And, uh, well, other family members got got mad because he was offered it, and then uh, you know, and then someone else was offered it for nothing. 
because they needed a vehicle. So it got to the point where the old man said, you know what, I'm sick of all this shit and no one's going to get this truck. So he parked it. He drove it to the spot, turned the key off. That was it. A little over six years sat in that same spot. Tires went flat, battery went dead, fuel went bad. Potting soil stayed in the back. So where it sat, it started, it took many years to become a sore subject, you know. That truck still sitting there, well, nobody's getting it. Now at this point, nobody wants it. And uh, got to the point where, you know, everyone's sick of looking at it. It's, it's one of those things, it's that eyesore that, I mean, not really an eyesore, but to the situation, you know, it becomes, yep, a broken dream. That's right. And that's where, right here, the sad guy, the sad guy comes in. The bad guy has to come in and fix the problem. It's the way it's gone for years. You gotta come in. You got to take those broken dreams away, clean them up. So, I get a call from a um, associate of mine, I guess, that I used to know, and he says, hey, how's it going? Yeah, um, you wouldn't want to come all the way down here and, and pick up a truck, would you? I said, not really. And I said, that's a you know a long way to pick up a junk vehicle. He said, well, I have a feeling it might not be junk. So he told me the story. And uh, it turned out that certain circumstances led me to, I got to go get this thing. Something about it. Something about the story. You know, uh, it's got to be done. <clears throat> Check the fire. So, fill up the tank, order some uh, brand new tires from my car trailer get those on the way, um, do a couple of repairs to it, and um, load up a couple of spares, load up some chains, some straps, and some tools, and hop in big black and cruise. So go all the way down there and uh, clean title. Clean title. Take it. My feelings were right about it. And I said, man, I got one picture. I received one picture of this where it was sitting. And I tell you, in that picture, as much as I could zoom in, I had the feeling. It's one of those ones. So, I said, you know what, I got to go do it. So anyway, I got down there and I noticed this rust-free, of course, afterwards with the potting soil, we know that, won't talk about that. But anyway, uh, rust-free, 05, little clean little Ford Ranger, old man's truck. Totally stock, untouched. He said, man, you think it'll fire up? I got the feeling that 
it wasn't the time or place to try to start it. You know, it's one of those things you go pick something up. You just take the people's word for it. And you just get it out of there because, you know, you start doing that and people start getting a little grumbly about things and they regret. So you just take it. You just go. They say, thank you very much for taking this away. We don't have to look at it anymore. It doesn't have to sit there. It disappears. It goes miles away. Can't sell it to anyone else. Don't want to see it driving around. We've been through that situation a thousand times, haven't we? Haven't we? So, make it disappear, they say. Here's the title. They even aired the tires up for me. Yep, the guy was nice enough to get out his little compressor. When I got there, the tires were aired up. I did try to put my jump pack on it because it was facing in and I wanted to get it forwards because it, you know, especially in a long haul like that, they ride a lot better with the weight on the tongue. But no, battery was too dead. So ended up pushing it. They were nice enough to uh, help me push it. Winched it on, headed over to an old friend's house. We had a few drinks about it. We ate some food about it. We had a little fun. Caught up on some things and shook hands and I was on my way. I might have had a little too many uh, good times that night. Had to stop off, get a motel room for the night. Hey, another 75 bucks. Better than driving back in the dark and uh, having some problems. You know, um, going out of state. So, we did that. Came back home and here you go. Some fresh fluids, fresh battery, a little cleanup, and uh, it's hard to believe that we end up with uh, a nice little truck here. So, hmm. what to do next? That's the beauty of it. Right now, just sitting in my garage. Will somebody buy it for some decent money? Probably. Do I want it for myself? No. I uh, Don't get me wrong if I needed some quick transportation. You know, something to just uh, get around and be perfect for that. But I'll tell you one thing, people up here in Maine, they love Ford Rangers for some reason. It's a huge calling for them and uh, that also fed into my whole thing about, you know, the fact of going all the way down to get it. So... And another thing is, is you're not going to find a ranger that's this clean up in Maine. It just ain't going to happen. If you do, it's going to be someone's baby that they don't want to sell, you know. And uh, sitting in a garage somewhere like this.
That's it, short story. That's how I got it. Free. Totally free. A little gas, a couple fluids, a lot of quarters down at the car wash. Because, uh, can't get my favorite power washer out right now. She'll freeze right up. So that's the story. Hopefully you're not sick of hearing about the uh, free. 2005 Ford Ranger, one owner, Five speed, five speed, four wheel drive, people, they want it right away, how much, how much, how much, how much, how much, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it, how much, how much, okay. It's for sale. Oh, well, uh, no. Yeah, that's what I thought. Maybe I just keep it around. Just go get coffee in it. You ever have something you just get coffee in? Maybe I list it today. Christmas Eve, 2021. Never know what I might do, but we well, got to keep in mind. You really, you know, you gotta keep it in mind and not forget. There's gotta be somebody. There's gotta be somebody. There's gotta be the bad guy. Hate me all you want. You know, sit there. I hate that guy. Call him a million names. He got that thing for free. I would have killed my goddamn grandmother to get that truck, is what people will tell you. You should give it away. Give it away to charity. You got it for nothing. This is it. This is what I do. Unfortunately, I am that guy. There has to be one. Someone was going to go get it. I was that guy. Broken dreams. Removal. Get it. Get it out. Take it away from my life. Take it out of my mind. That's it. So, just remember this holiday season. You never know what might happen. You probably say, well, it's been too long. There's no way. No way anything's going to happen. No way. Keep in mind, keep looking. 
Keep looking around. You never know. I eventually might see you on the streets.